Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you everybody for being here. Um, my name is Sophia Galani. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Director of Communications and Climate Action Advocate for Green Muslims. Um, I'm based in Northern Virginia, um, and my mosque is Darul Noor. Um, again, thank you everybody for being here. I'm really excited uh, that you took the time out your evening to be here, learn more about how um, we can go solar um, and how each of us individually um, can be Khalifas of this earth. Um, I am here with my colleague, uh, Joel Novi from Interfaith, the Director of Interfaith Power and Light, um, as well as Dr. Corey Majid, um, environmental activist and founder of Green Ramadan in DC, and our most important speaker probably, Roger Horowitz, um, with Solar Sun, Solar United Neighbors, um, otherwise known as Sun. Um, I'd also like to thank tonight's co-sponsors, the Imam Center, the Islamic Center of Maryland, and the Islamic Community Center uh, of Potomac and Masjid Muhammad. Thanks for making tonight possible. Um, spring is a great time to talk about going solar because we have all this daylight. Um, we had a really, really rainy spring. Um, so now we're getting to the summer months uh, to talk about going solar um, and getting practical guidance from Roger um, how to do so at home um, in DC, Maryland, or even Virginia. Um, throughout the evening, if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat. Uh, we do have somebody monitoring them, um, and we'll have question and answer time at the end. So if we don't get to it uh, during the presentation, we'll try to get to it at the very end as well. Um, and then we're going to conclude the night by taking a few moments uh, to start the process of going solar. Um, it'll... Um, and there'll be a little questionnaire to see if your home is a good fit for going solar. Um, and also just FYI, we'll be wrapping up around 8.20. Uh, so we have plenty of time to get ready for my room. Um, so before we begin, I'd like to do a brief land acknowledgement, um, the indigenous land that we're probably on here. Um, it's the traditional territory of the Nako, Nakochtink and Piscataway. Pis um, peoples, their presence is imbued in the lands and the waters surrounding us. Um, maybe nurture our relationship with our indigenous neighbors and the shared responsibilities to their homelands where we all call home today. Um, before we really get into it too much, um, I wanted to take a brief moment to talk about why going solar is important to begin with. Um, you know, there's lots of reasons why, um, Gas prices right now are crazy. Energy prices are crazy right now. Um, it can be very economical to go solar. Um, but as Muslims, uh, people who follow Islam, uh, one of the reasons why we want to go solar is the environmental benefit. Um, we are khalifas of the environment. Um, we have a lot of those creation that we should be trying to protect and restore whenever possible. Um, and solar is a great way to do that. Um, in a very practical way as well. Um, you know, you don't have to change change le legislature. Um, you can just make a small change at home um, because our current system relies very, very heavily on fossil fuels um, that we've seen, especially lately. Um, we were hoping for more policy change that would change um, our reliance on fossil fuels to more renewable energy. And unfortunately, we're not really seeing that um, on a large scale. Um, so going solar lets us take uh, control of our um, energy source. Um, and the big thing I'll be talking about, about going, doing anything environmental, um, is that we want to restore the, the planet that we're on. Um, if you're in the DC DMV area, um, if you've been here for more than 10 years or even probably the past five years, I'm sure that you've seen an incredible change in all the buildings and all the roads, um, everything that we've, you know, cut down forests, increased uh, stormwater problems. And so this is a small step towards doing something that can be beneficial, uh, not only to yourself, not only to the planet, but to even like your local communities. Um, and especially with Sun, Rogers can go into it, uh, the co-op options can make it a little bit more affordable. Um, 
if you haven't heard that before. Um, I know personally uh, where I'm at, um, there wasn't a co-op option and so it wasn't quite right fit for us yet. Um, so I'm really excited and hopefully that this will be the right fit for others. Um, and that even if it's not, I hope that you learned a lot today. Um, you're able to pass along the information. If you know anybody else that's interested in going solar or just learning more about what Green Muslims does, um, they can reach out. Um, and that if going solar is not the right option for you, um, definitely, definitely reach out um, to Green Muslims and we can talk about different ways that you can be, you know, police with the environment, um, environmental stewards, uh, what you can do in your local community. We do have a presence in uh, DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Uh, so you try to hit all three, um, whether that be a hike, uh, planting, doing tree plantings, uh, cleanup, or educational events um, where you do all of it. So please reach out. Um, and I think now is the time for uh, Sister Cori Majid to hop on. Um, and she is a um, successful recipient of solar panels um, and going solar. So um, we want to talk a little bit about how she did that and how that's been for her. Hi, Cori. Hey, Salaamu Alaikum. Welcome, Salam. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. Alhamdulillah. Um, mm. Go ahead. Um, I mean, do you have anything you want to say right away? I have a couple of questions just to kind of guide the conversation. Go ahead. Okay. First off, what inspired you to go solar? Um, I think I heard somewhere uh, a long time ago that if I lived in Maryland, then most likely that my energy um, was going to be coming from coal. And um, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to uh, walk uh, the talk that I'm um, that I'm trying to tell pe other people to do. So um, in my neighborhood, uh, there was uh, a company. I, the, the company is slipping my mind right now, but they were have since been bought out by another company anyway. So probably doesn't matter. But there in my neighborhood, literally down the street, there was um, a family who um, were inviting people into their home to learn about um, solar, the solar that they just got installed. So since it was literally down, literally down the street, you know, it was easy for me to go and just check it out and see what was happening. I think part of it, I like things that are easy. <laughs> so, and they were offering food too, so why not go? So um, I went to my neighbor's house. Um, yes, it was Solar City, thank you. Um, that that was it. So um, I went to their house and they told us about the process and somebody from um, Solar City spoke and I was like, oh, I can do that. You know, it's my neighbor right down the street, literally on the same street. And since our houses face, you know, the same way I knew, you know, and I didn't have any trees blocking, I knew, um, let's try that. So uh, we set up a meeting uh, at my house and I already knew I was going to say yes, but I had to get my husband to be, get on board. <laughs> so the guy was basically convincing my husband. And um, so um, we got, um, they they did something from, on Google, looked on Google Maps to see the positioning of my rooftop. I thought it was so cool how they did that. And they said, you know, you're a candidate and let's do it. So um, yeah, we got, we got that. But also, um, I went to, how do I, I think I went to a, like a green event uh, put on by Prince George's County at a local uh, community center. And um, I saw um, Neighborhood Sun, I think it is. And I already had solar panels, but I was like, okay, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just double dip. Cause Neighborhood Sun, you don't necessarily have to have roof space. They, they deal with like solar credits. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do that too. <laughs> and it, it costs less. So it was no problem um, convincing my husband. So I have the solar credits for whatever my solar panels are not producing. Maybe it's um, in the winter time when there's less daylight hours. So I got both. I got, you know, what used to be Solar City and Neighborhood Sun. So I'm getting, you know, both, both ways. Cool. Um, what would you say is like the coolest part about getting and being solar? <laughs> the coolest part, 
um, is seeing my meter go backwards. That's the coolest part. <laughs> and um, getting um, bills from my power company that are in the negative. And then once it's so far in the negative, then they'd send us a check. So getting checks from my power company and seeing my meter go backwards is super cool. Awesome. Um, if you could give one piece of advice to somebody going solar, what would it be? Um, it would be that uh, there's a there's probably a program for you, no matter what situation you're living uh, you're living in. So whether you live in an apartment, there's some way you can get some type of clean energy. You don't have to own you know the building. Whether you live in a home, there's some way that you can um, get clean energy um, in this state now, which is great. Awesome. Um, final question. Um, how would you explain why it's important as Muslim Muslims? Uh, to want to go solar and even think about going down this path as it relates to our faith. Right. Um, I truly believe that we are all, um, that we all have to make a conscious choice between, uh, and I don't really like, um, what's that type of situation where you only have two choices. I don't, I don't like that, but yeah. okay. in this case, <laughs> I think you need to choose, we need to consciously choose between being Khalifas, stewards of the planet and consumers. Which one, um, which one defines you? Which one has Allah called you to be? Allah did not say in the Quran, I command you to be consumers of the earth. No, it was Khalifas, it was stewards and caretakers of the earth. And um, that's why one of the main reason why I chose to go solar. I think what's really cool about that is it's like, you know, in your situation, um, you're able to like connect with your neighbors and your community by going solar, but the benefit of going solar is borderless, right? If everybody everywhere does a little bit of that, then we're able to really make such a big impact um, by just relying less on fossil fuels and more renewable energy and everything is connected. The pollution, you know, if we're getting oil, it's getting extracted somewhere else, um, that damages somebody's country, somebody's home, somebody's water. Uh, we see it here with the Dakota Keystone XL pipeline, mm -hmm. um, damaging water, uh, and then all of the issues that come with relying on fossil fuels. Um, and so a little step like going solar and being less reliant on fossil fuels, like not only decreases it, but also gives a voice to people who are fighting for it. Um, Cause we are in a consumer world um, and while we're trying not to be consumers, it doesn't matter where we put our money. And so mm -hmm. if we're not putting it in fossil fuels and we're getting it from your power company, paying you checks every now and then, um, <laughs> then it's a great way to go. And then I think there's one more cool thing about yeah. uh, getting solar, at least having uh, the panels, is that they said, I don't know if this is true, but this is what I remember them telling me, that the excess energy is used by my neighbors. So I'm helping my neighbors in another way. So it's cool. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for popping in to share uh, your experience of going solar. We appreciate your time for being here. Thank you. Um, wait, before you go. Sorry, come back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to say anything about Green Ramadan? Um, no, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, Corey uh, <laughs> is with Green Ramadan. Um, it's a major organization um, that she runs pretty much by herself. Um, so if anybody is interested, she's amazing. Thank you. Night. Night. Go. Sorry. <laughs> I like a uh... love this one. Um, and now um, I mentioned Roger earlier. Um, he's gonna come in and talk to us uh, about how um, Sun has residential residential co op. Um, and how you can sign up for one today. Roger is the director of Go Solar programs at Solar United Neighbors, where he combines his passion for community development and organizing to empower communities to go solar. He has been a supporter of Interface Power and Light campaign to encourage neighbors to go solar. And we are so grateful that he was able to be here today. Um, again, you guys are welcome to drop any questions that you have in the chat. Um, while Roger's speaking, we'll try to answer them live um, or either after the presentation, we are going to have a Q&A at the end. 
Um, and then just another reminder, we are going to end around 820. So we have plenty of time for Roger prayer. Um, Roger, take it away. Thanks so much. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Great. Um, well, I'm I'm showing my screen, so I can't I can't see you um, all, but um, right now, but yeah, put questions into the chat, and then I'm happy to answer stuff afterwards. I can also stick around, and also I'll share contact information, and um, and the whole team from Interfaith Power and Light will share information as well. Um, great. Well, uh, my name is Roger Horowitz. I'm from Solar United Neighbors. I've worked here for about two and a half years. Um, I'm in Washington, D.C. Uh, Solar United Neighbors, we're a national nonprofit. Uh, we're a 501c3. We help people go solar. Um, you can see our national impact here. Um, we've helped um, almost 7,000 families go solar. We're inching up on that number now. And, you know, we've be, it, been able to save a lot of uh, a lot of CO2 from going into the atmosphere by uh, by running our solar co-ops and also even in places where we don't run solar co-ops just by helping people go solar and providing free advice and that kind of thing. Um, we got started in 2007. Our executive director, Anya Schoolman, is here. And um, Mount Pleasant in Washington, D.C., which is right near where I am in Columbia Heights, about 50 homes that year went solar in the first Solar United Neighbors co-op. Um, back then, there was no Solar United Neighbors. It was just her and her family talking to their neighbors. And people kept calling her and emailing her from all over the country saying, hey, this is so cool. And they saw on the news that she had, you know, she wanted to go solar and wanted to help other people do it too. So she got a hold of the neighbors together. And then fast forward 15 years, and we have members in all 50 states. We've run over 320 solar co-ops. And then um, each of those co-ops on average has helped about 20 people go solar, some more, um, some fewer. So you can see through our co-ops, we've had 6,600 um, plus people go, go solar. Um, and then we have on the ground staff in, uh, in 12 states and in DC and in Puerto Rico. And our theory of change at Solar United Neighbors is to do exactly what, uh, what um, Corey and Sophia were, uh, were talking about. Um, you know, we want people to be stewards of the environment. Um, going solar is great. And that is what my team and what I primarily work on at Sun, but also a big part of what we do is joining together and fighting for better environmental policies and for better solar policies and for ensuring that everyone has the right to produce solar. Um, so a lot of the time we spend is doing advocacy to public utility commissions and to homeowners associations, trying to make sure that people can put solar on their homes or if they can't put it on their homes, that there's community solar, which I'll talk about as well. And at Solar United Neighbors, we do a lot of work on equity. And we, um, we want to make sure the current energy system, um, as you all pointed out, um, is not fair and equitable. And, you know, people exp experiencing poverty are much more likely to experience pollution. And, and all of the fossil fuels need to come out somewhere and be burned somewhere. And that impact is really um, spread, spread around to, you know, disproportionately affect um, right, low and moderate income households. So we work specifically to make sure that there are solar opportunities for folks in those households, because as we embrace solar energy and wind energy and all clean energies, we want to make sure that everyone is benefiting, not, not, just, not just wealthy folks. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about solar technology and then just about how solar co-ops work and the and economics, because that's always important to, to folks. But I'll go through the technology part pretty quickly. Um, so feel free to ask questions um, afterwards or put them in the chat as well. So when we're talking about solar panels, we're talking about so solar photovoltaics, which convert solar energy into electricity. And then solar panels have all of these components that you see here on the screen. And then when you get a lot of panels together, it's called a solar array. That's the term for what you see at, on, on the right there. And then a solar array can be anywhere. It can be a ground mount like that one. It can be on an asphalt shingle roof. That's the most common type of roof that you see right there. But also if you live in a city or in a row house or on a flat roof, it can be on a standing sea metal roof or on a rubber roof, any type of roof, there is a type of solar installation that goes on that roof. And then here you see inverters and um, electricity from the sun. Solar panels make energy 
that's DC and our, ho our homes run on AC. So an inverter takes the energy from DC and makes it AC so it can run the appliances in our homes. So there are really two main parts to a solar system, the solar panels themselves and the inverters that, that uh, change the electricity so that we can actually use it at home. And here you see three different types of inverters, but you don't need to worry about which one to use. Um, the solar company will, will tell you which kind is gonna work best for your home. And then how does solar connect to your electric panel? It's pretty simple. They use the extra space at the bottom of the panel. Most homes do not need a panel upgrade. Um, occasionally, if you have very old wiring, you may need a panel upgrade, but they'll be able to take a look, the solar company, and tell you if, if you do. And then when we're talking about solar, we're talking about kilowatts. That's how a solar system is measured. But kilowatt hours are what our electric bill is um, in. So one kilowatt is what um, it's, it's on for an hour is one kilowatt hour. And that's how electric bills are, are measured. So you'll see there are all different sizes of solar systems. I live in a row house in, in the middle of DC and I have a 6.8 kilowatt system on my roof and that covers every, every inch of my roof. Um, but it really depends. The best size for your house really depends on what your goals are. Is your goal to spend, let's say under $10,000? If it is, you can tell the installer that and they will come up with a system that fits under that budget. Or if your goal is to get 100% of your electricity consumption covered and you just wanna get the biggest system possible, the, they'll, um, they'll take a look at your roof and see if that's possible. And they'll work with you to, to figure out what, what makes the most sense. And for scale, you can see here is a, a sample human, a person and, uh, and 12 solar panels. And this is showing that each of these solar panels is 350 watts and there are a thousand watts in a kilowatt. So that's a 4.2 kilowatt system. So here is the term, here is a little diagram and going through the terminology, we have the solar array on the roof, the solar inverter, the electricity goes to your electrical panel. Um, mo most of your electricity that you're producing is gonna be used directly inside your home. But um, like Corey said, the extra electricity will actually go out through your, through your electric meter and the meter will either spin backwards or for a, uh, you know, a new meter, the numbers will just go down, um, you know, if there's not actually a little spinning wheel on it. And then that energy will go on the wires um, to your neighbors. And then net metering is the, um, is what billing is called. Um, basically, there are rules in Virginia, DC, and Maryland that ensure that um, electric companies need to do net metering. And net metering is saying, hey, if you produce more power during the day, let's say you're not at home during the day, but it's a really sunny day and you're not running your air conditioning and you're producing more electricity than your home is using, that power goes out onto the grid and then you get a credit on your bill. So that excess energy that's going out to the grid is credited on your bill. So at night when the sun isn't shining, let's say you're watching your TV, you're getting power from the grid. So basically when you see your bill, you'll see a line for how much extra electricity did you send to the grid? How much electricity did you get from the grid? And they'll subtract those. And that's um, how net metering works. That's the system that, that basically ensures that you're getting, um, getting credit for what you're producing. And then a good roof for solar, um, because we're in the Northern hemisphere, South is best, East and West are okay. Uh, North is not great. Also little or no shading um, because we want the sun to be able to get to the solar panels. Also, um, we need enough space to mount solar panels on your roof. So if there are a lot of dormers, that could be a reason that it doesn't work on your roof. Um, and then for folks who don't, um, who where solar doesn't work on your roof, or if you're a renter, um, community solar is a great option. And community solar is currently legal in Maryland and in DC. And we are working to try and make it um, legal in Virginia as well. And basically the way community solar works is there are panels in your community. Maybe they're on top of a school, maybe they're in a field, maybe they're on top of a warehouse. And those panels, you can buy credits, um, like, um, like Corey was saying, um, and you can buy, right. You can um, basically, you can get part of your electricity usage from those panels at the community solar array. So even if you have solar on your home, if it's not producing 100%, of your, of your electricity, you can get a share of your bill 
where the, where the solar is produced locally. And here you can see in this diagram, some of it's going to the school, the corner store, and the Smith family. And then here is just uh, an explainer of basically what I said about how that um, you sign up for community solar, you can do that on our website. And also um, Interfaith Power and Light will share more information about community solar as well. And you buy, basically you buy the energy and then the utility company makes sure that you're, the, um, you're you know, not the actual electrons because they can't really control those, but that you're getting credit um, and that you're saving money. Because um, a key part about community solar is not only that it's local, because we, we really like that the solar is produced in your neighborhood or in your county, you know, not on the other side of the country, because that's not very efficient to, to, uh, to make the electricity travel that far. But also we, we think community solar is really important because solar companies are saving money and putting solar on your roof um, saves you money and utilities, we, we know they're making a lot of money. So we wanna make sure that community solar subscribers can also save some money as well. And then also Solar United Neighbors, if you go to our website, we have a list of community um, solar farms near you. And then most folks don't get batteries. Um, what I always say is solar panels will save you money. It may take years for them to save you money, but they will. Batteries will not save you money. But batteries are great if you're considering having a generator. Generators you know, traditionally run on gas or on propane, um, you know, on fossil fuels. So batteries are a great way to make sure that you have a backup generator source and batteries are powered by your solar panels. Because otherwise, if the power goes out, um, we need to protect the line workers who are working to put the, to get the um, electric lines back up again. So we can't, so your house isn't allowed to produce um, solar power when the, when the grid is down because it would go back, go out onto the lines and there would be nowhere for it to go and that would be a problem. And also it could injure a worker who's trying to, who's trying to fix the lines up there. So as a result, when the power goes out, your solar panels are disconnected automatically. Um, but if you have a battery, that doesn't happen and you, can use, and you can use that energy. And here's an example of all the power outages um, in, in Texas um, uh, last winter. Um, so here you can see battery storage it's great. It's a really cool technology. Um, and it's great if you are considering a generator, if you have critical loads at home, or um, if you want one in case of emergency, but it is not going to save, save you money. And then here's an example of a battery system. Then in this case, this battery bank can be recharged by solar every day. Um, and you can, and it basically, most batteries are not going to power your entire home will power a section of your home. So you'll be able to pick with the, with the solar company which things you want to back up. And then we have more information on our website as well. We can share all of these links as well. Um, and also as part of all of our so solar co-ops, we also have EV chargers. I mean, most people don't get an EV charger unless you're planning on getting an EV in the near future. But, but if you're planning on doing that, um, you know, while, while a solar installer is there, you know, it's a great option to, to get that connected. While well, in, this, in this example, they're already putting solar panels on the garage. It's pretty easy for them to put in an EV charger in the garage as well. And EV chargers tend to be much less expensive than, than solar. And, and these are, you know, just, um, just estimates. Also some EVs come with an EV charger and then you would just need the solar company to put in the 240 volt outlet in your, in your garage or on the side of your home. Um, and then, um, many folks don't know this, you don't have EVs, but I know in the next couple of years, a lot more folks will drive EVs. I just got one this past year, but actually any EV can charge from a standard outlet. So um, a 120 volt outlet, you can just plug in and charge from there. It's just much slower. So you might be adding four to six miles of charge per hour to a battery, as opposed to a level two charger, um, which is a 240 volt outlet. That's what most EV owners get in their garage or in their driveway or on the side of their home. And then that, that charges it about five times faster on average. Anyway, I don't need to talk more about EV chargers, but we have a lot, we have a lot more res resources here. And there are a lot of um, really great incentives, both from utilities and from local governments. I know um, both DC and Maryland um, have lots of EV charger incentives. I got an EV charger this past year. And I think between 
the federal and between the DC tax credits um, that paid for 80% of the install, um, which is pretty great. Um, and in terms of, these are the most commonly uh, asked questions. Um, people love to ask about warranties, which makes a lot of sense. Other than price, warranties end up being the most important thing when you're getting solar. Um, in terms of warranties, all solar systems are gonna come with a lot of warranties and you'll have those all written out. It's really important to just ask a solar company, you know, who do I contact in case this breaks? And they'll, they'll tell you, they always have a roof penetration warranty in case your roof leaks to make sure that they're gonna fix that. There, um, there are warranties that are usually 25 years for the solar panels and the inverters. And then there's also a, um, usually a labor warranty. So um, if, if they made a mistake, if something falls off, if it's loose, et cetera, and, the, and usually those are, those are usually at least 10 years about what, what the solar company would cover. Um, yes, your homeowner's insurance covers solar. You just need to tell them that you have it. And that way they will make sure to put that in the policy. Um, so let's say, God, God forbid, your, your home were to burn down or something, that would be covered. Um, and then in terms of maintenance, um, you don't need to do anything. Uh, solar panels don't have any moving parts, which is really good. Um, so they, they, just, they just keep working. And it's really cool because you have an app or you have a, a website um, that, lets you, um, that le lets you track um, how much power you are, you are producing. And then if those numbers are low, you can monitor that, but also your solar company can monitor that. So they'll let you know, um, they'll let you know that there's something wrong with your system and then they can come up and take a look at it. And systems um, are guaranteed to last as long as the, the warranty. Um, so generally that's 25 years, but they may last longer. Honestly, people don't know how long they're gonna last because most people haven't put up solar systems that long ago. This is still relatively new. The vast majority of solar that's gone up in the US has gone up in the past 10 years. Um, but they're warranted for 25 years, but we think it they may last 30, 40 years. And there are rules in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. The HOAs are not allowed to ban solar on your home. They can make some rules about where it can go. But for example, in Virginia, if the if if they don't allow it on the front of your house, but the front of your house is more than 10% advent, more advantageous than the rear of your house. Um, I think the, the law, each of the laws is different, but in Virginia, at least, they're not allowed to, to tell you to put it on the back of your house if that's gonna mean that there's gonna be more than 10% lower production. And in historic districts, same kind of thing, it depends on each jurisdiction, but more and more historic districts are, um, are allowing solar but you can definitely talk with your solar company. And also you could talk with the staff at Sun and we have people that have worked in basically every jurisdiction that can, can give you advice about that as well. Um, in terms of solar economics, people always wanna know how much this is gonna cost, which is, which is very, very important, of course. Um, solar costs, um, this year you've heard a lot about inflation, how prices have gone up and they have gone up a little bit, but in general, if you look at this chart, Costs have dropped 73% since 2010. Um, and compared to the 1970s, I mean, it's amazing how much cheaper solar is now than, what, than it used to be. And there's a 26% federal tax credit this year. Next year, it's gonna be a 22% federal tax credit. So because of that, um, installers are really, really busy this year and a lot of people are going solar. So I definitely recommend, you know, it's a great time to do it because in general with climate change, it's always a great time to go solar. Um, but the federal tax credit is because it's going down 4% at the end of the year. Um, this is a great year to go to go solar. And then in terms of the, the cost of solar, you can see here that um, the labor costs and then the actual parts are actually relatively low as a percentage of the cost. Um, the biggest percentage of the cost of solar for a solar company are these soft costs which means people going door to door, people making the phone calls, the rent on an, on an office space, um, all that kind of stuff. So going solar with a group, um, with a co-op, for example, um, really helps reduce the installer's costs. And that's why folks in co-ops usually can save that 15% over going solar on your own because the installer just doesn't have all the costs associated with customer acquisition. So they can provide a better price.
And then here you can see that the tax credit is um, going down to 22% at the end of the year and then zero in 2024. Obviously, we are working really hard as an advocacy organization to try and get it extended, hopefully at 26% for 2023 and 2024. But as you know, with Congress, nothing, nothing is guaranteed. And then this is some example pricing. Um, pricing varies a lot. Um, it, really, it really depends. And each co-op actually has different pricing because our um, Maryland, Virginia, and DC solar co-ops all have different installers. So they actually all have different, different pricing, you know, based on the size of the group. Also permitting tends to cost more in Washington, DC. Um, so pricing is always a little bit higher in the city. But you can see here, for my system size on my house is 6.8 kilowatts. So it's about halfway in the middle there. But you can see these are some example costs. Um, usually it's um, DC has solar renewable energy credits that are worth the most. Uh, Maryland, there, you can see um, this annual estimate here. So for a four kilowatt system, solar renewable energy credits are basically payments from the utility. So the, this sample system in Maryland for four kilowatts, they're getting $250 a year from the utility. In Virginia, it's going to be a little bit less. Maybe it would be $150. But you know, all, all three places are great places to go solar because they have really good policies and you can get these solar renewable energy credits. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and then in terms of example financing here, um, there are a lot of different financing options. Um, and then, you know, solar leases and power purchase agreements are really great options also that are no money down. But if you do um, want to own your system, that will have a better bang for your buck long term. And then in terms of, um, you can see from this example financing chart with this four kilowatt system, you did a 10 year loan or a 15 year loan from a home equity line of credit. You can see the 10 year loan, um, you would save more money long-term, but you would have this $20 a month payment. And then a 15 year loan here, um, you would actually save $61 a month on your electric bill and the loan payment would only be $59 a month. So you'd actually um, save $2 a month for the, for the first 15 years. And then starting at you know years 16 through 25, because the system's warranty to last for 25 years, um, you wouldn't have any loan payment at all. And then we have a million different financing options. Um, DC has a great low and moderate income program called Solar for All, which um, provides free community solar. Um, for income qualified residents. And um, DC also, um, if you're a homeowner in DC, has, has um, free systems through Solar for All for income qualified residents as well. And the Montgomery County Green Bank has a great program um, as well for both community solar and for um, this access so solar program um, if your family income is under uh, 97,500 or less per household. Um, there's also third-party ownership programs, and also um, the the folks from um, from Air Faith Power and Light can also um, talk about some of the great financing options. Um, this area is really great compared to most of the country because there's just a lot of support here, um, you know, uh, in Virginia and in Maryland with the state legislatures and in D.C. with the council. And there are a million different loan options. I mean, going through your bank is great. There. Are, there are a couple of different uh, solar focused clean energy credit unions, and also every installer also uh, offers different financing options as well. And then I'm just going to wrap up here with how solar co-ops work, but happy to answer more questions after that. Also happy to talk more about um, all the different financing options as well. Um, joining a solar co-op, the reasons people do it, save money, of course but also because there's more support through the process. Solar can sound really intimidating. So at Solar United Neighbors, we're a nonprofit. We are funded by grants and foundations to help support you through the process. So if you wanna go solar through a cup, that's great. But if you decide to go solar on your own, we provide free support. We can review all your solar proposals um, free of charge. And then you, it's also a great way to meet other folks like you're doing tonight folks who are interested in, um, in solar and in the environmental movement. 
And this is how the process works. Um, we have our three open co-ops in the DC area right now. And you can see um, people are learning like you're doing tonight. You can sign up online, which we will highly encourage that you do. And then all of these co-ops actually just selected an installer. So there are installers for all three co-ops in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. And then all those co-ops close at the end of August. And then some folks in the co-ops are actually getting installations done now already. Usually the timeline is two or three months between signing a contract and actually getting the solar panels up on your roof because um, the local municipality needs to approve all the permits as does the electric company. Um, this year, because of the tax credits going down, I would recommend if you're gonna go solar, doing it as soon as possible. Um, just because the co-ops close at the end of August. But I, I've seen some installers this year, rather than the two to three months, are saying they're you know now estimating four months for an installation. And your system needs to be up on your roof by the end of December. So that's why I, would, I definitely recommend going, going solar sooner rather than later. And that's it for me. I will, uh, I will stop sharing my screen, um, but happy to answer more questions. Also, um, Noam and Joel and Sophia, if you have other, other stuff to add on, that would be great as well. So I wanna see if anyone has um, questions to ask in the whole group. Um, uh, we'll also give everyone a chance to um, sign up tonight and that can set in motion an opportunity to be in touch with Sun about your other, you know, your questions and have them take a look at your roof. But if there's anyone who wants to ask Roger questions now, we'd be happy to hear them. I saw a question about whether will we send the recording and the slides later? The answer is yes, of course. <laughs> um, Hi. Hello. Hi, yeah, I missed the first 30 minutes. I totally forgot. So I don't know what I missed in the first 30 minutes of a webinar. Okay, so we'll send a recording. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm glad you were here for what you heard, and uh, there'll be more. You'll get to watch the video later. There was uh, it was a very we we heard from uh, Corey, my sister Corey, about her solar panels and um, how she went through the process and um, why they're really cool. Um, if anyone has solar questions, we can receive them. Somebody else came off mute. Melissa. I have a question. Oh, Corey. Yeah. So um, do you have any programs for like houses of worship or this is this this is just for homes, homes on. Yeah, homes. So um, so at Sun, we mostly end up work, work doing residential okay. um, for homes. But um, but I know that Joelle um, has been working a lot with houses of worship. So I will I'll let her answer about that one. Okay. Um, Yes, tonight's focus is on going solar at home, which is kind of its own ball game. But, right. um, but I am putting in the chat our page of resources for going solar in a congregation. Um, most of those um, congregations that go solar do so through something called power purchase agreement financing. Um, and it's also important to see kind of like where we are in the in the movement in the sector. So what we have on that page that I'm about to put in the chat are um, a map of solar congregations throughout the region. So you can see Who's already who's already gone solar? You can even go visit them. Um, and then uh, below that is a video, my 14-minute explanation of power purchase agreement financing. Um, and if if you've gone through the, those two resources, you are um, ready to talk to us about going solar at your congregation. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Um, Melissa, did you have a question? Oop. Sorry, you might have missed our chance there. Um, well, I can um, just say uh, Julia asked in the chat. Um, about why you do a co-op or or going solar on your own. Um, so, I mean, a co-op is great because you do get the support and generally prices tend, tend to be lower. Um, co-ops are time limited. So in Maryland, um, Northern Virginia, you know, the DC suburbs of Maryland, um, Northern Virginia and DC, um, Solar United Neighbors runs a co-op once a year. So our co-op now is open and it closes um, at the end of August. Um, so 
you know, we, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity, but also, um, you know, our goal, I mean, we're a nonprofit. Our goal is just to help, help people go to go solar. If you have a preferred company oh, no, look at that. or, or if you, so sorry that the... yeah, if you have a company that, that you prefer, um, de- you know, definitely go ahead and work with them. Also, I always recommend that people get three quotes. I mean, solar is a big commitment in terms of price. I mean, like, so, I mean, I'm also the person who would say same thing, you know, if you're getting a washer or dryer installed or you're getting a new air conditioner for your home. Um, yeah, I just always recommend getting getting three quotes. And that way also you can compare the co-op pricing to see like, oh, this is gonna be way better than I thought it was gonna be. Um, but yeah, it, it's really up to you and how your timing and you, how your timing is working. The one thing is because of the tax credits, people end up going solar a lot more towards the end of the year, which actually means that it's always better to go solar at the beginning of the year, because that way there's not the rush because all the, all the installers are really, really busy, usually from August on, because everyone wants to get their system installed by December 31st to get the tax credit that year. Um, so it ends up being this, being this strange system. It has nothing to do with the sun, it just has to do with just has to do with taxes. So there, we're getting a couple of questions in the chat that have to do with kind of where we are in the in the solar co-op process in this partic- for these particular co-ops, the ones that serve for DC, for um, Capital Area Maryland, and for Northern and for Northern Virginia. So you know, one question is, do all of the signees through the co-op use the same company? So within each co-op, there is one selected installer, and then the question was, who selects it? And the answer is the the co-op through a committee of people who step forward do select the, the installer. And so that's one thing I love about working with Sun is that they're not always choosing the same company. It's not working with a single company. It's working with a nonprofit that helps neighbors cho- you know, choose different companies and, and have the companies compete for their business. Um, but I, my understanding is that in this particular moment, the Northern Virginia, DC and capital area co-ops are at the point in the process where all three have chosen installers and you actually do know who you'd be getting in each case. Um, Roger, could you run down like if that, if I'm right about that and yeah, um, what yeah, the different installers are? Because pe- that's not a, it, in this particular moment in the process, it's not a mystery. Yes, yes, th- yeah, that, that's true. Um, yeah, so at Sun, one of the cool things that we do as a nonprofit, like Joel just said, is um, the members of the co-op choose the installer. So right now, our DC co-op has I think 56 members. And Arlington is up to close to 150. And that's, it's not just Arlington, it's Arlington and all of Northern Virginia. And then I think we have about 120 in Maryland. Um, so we have a ton of members. Basically, when we get the 30 members in a co-op, we send out a request for proposal to area solar installers. And then for each co-op, we usually get about five to 10 companies that say they want to work with the co-op. So what we do for Solar United Neighbors is we check everyone's licensing, licensing, check their references, check their online reviews, make sure they actually have in supply what they say they're gonna have in supply. And then once we do that, there's a selection committee, which is made up of members of members of the co-op. Once we have 30 members, we ask folks, hey, who wants to be part of this committee? We meet for about two hours and look at the five to 10 bids from solar companies and the group decides. Um, so like Joel said, it's a pretty interesting process because the groups decide different companies every year. Like for example, Arlington and Northern Virginia, we've had three different installers the past three years. And it totally depends. Sometimes it's because the selection committee really, you know, sometimes it's about the lowest price. Sometimes it's about the best warranty. Sometimes it's, oh, I really like that they're, you know, a certified B corporation or that they work with formerly incarcerated individuals and have a training program. So like, yeah, they're a little bit more expensive, but I really like that, you know, they, they have a, you know, a really good mission. Um, so uh, yeah, so we have three companies selected right now in DC, um, it's Solar Solution and they, they only work in DC and they're, they're based in DC. And then the Arlington and Northern Virginia co-op, a, um, Solar Energy World is the installer and they are based in Maryland. And then um, and then, Sustainable Energy Systems is the 
all of these acronyms, acronyms have a lot of solar and a lot of sustainable. Uh, sustainable Energy Systems is based in Frederick, Maryland, and they're doing the Maryland uh, Capital Area Co-op, which, which is Frederick County, Montgomery County, and Prince George's County. So right now, are these co-ops still accepting new members? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the deadline for all of them um, to join is, is August 31st. So um, I think um, Joelle or Noam uh, put the links in the chat. And this, this is what we're about to do. This okay. is the next step. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll turn it back to you then. Um, ah, great. Great question in the chat. First of all, how do we sign up? I'm about to put, uh, or Noam is about to put some um, links in the chat. Um, we'll put the direct links for the co-ops in the regions that we think most people here are from. If if your region isn't covered, there's probably still a way to go solar at home. Just click on the listing of the all of them and you'll find one. Um, and if solar isn't an option for you, we'll also put um, like solar panels aren't an option for you. We'll also put a community solar sign up link, which is available to Maryland. Um, the particular link we're going to put is for Maryland folks. Um, uh, are you committing uh, no, you are just starting the process. You are, you don't, you're not committing to anything until you have a proposal and sign it. Um, what you're committing to when you sign up for a solar co-op is to receive a proposal from the co-op selected installer. That's all. Um, so as we heard this year's Sun Solar, co sorry, I didn't, maybe I didn't introduce myself. I'm Joelle, she, her, Interfaith Power and Light. It's been really wonderful to be here and um, working with Green Muslims and Solar United Neighbors and the um, co-sponsoring Masajid on this um, on this workshop. Um, so this year's Sun Solar Co-ops are open until the end of the summer. And as has been said a couple times, unless Congress passes new climate legislation, which would be awesome, we will fight for that, um, the federal tax credit will be stepping down at the end of the year. So the deal you will get if you go solar this summer through these co-ops is probably better than what may be available next year. So that's why we're trying to um, be a little bit expeditious and, and focused about doing a lot of these, having a lot of these conversations this summer. I wanna invite everyone on the line tonight who owns a home in our region that isn't yet powered by sunshine to get connected with the co-op, even if you're not sure you wanna do it or you still have questions, this is just a way to continue the conversation. It's not, as I said, it's not committing you to anything. You will make your own decisions about whether to proceed with solar through the co-op's offerings. Somebody said, in, oh, it was Julia who said in the chat about, um, you know, should you get other quotes? So once the um, co-op selects an installer, that is a price per kilowatt, you know, you installed. So you might, you still can decide if you get 10 kilowatts or seven kilowatts or whatever, whatever size of system you want, but the price per kilowatt is locked in by the co-op's selection of that installer and their deal. Their deal that they give you is, so you're gonna know what price you're gonna get um, with all of these co-ops and you can, um, I think there'd be no problem with price shopping. <laughs> um, see if there are any alternatives that are better. Um, I also wanna mention, and this was mentioned in passing, but I wanna say it again, both in DC and in Montgomery County, there are special programs that can help out low and moderate income homeowners bring the price down even further. So when you fill out this form, you will have opportunities to indicate on your income and that that will automatically kind of let, um, let um, those programs know, um, don't assume you can't afford to participate. Just start the process and see. <laughs> um, so in a moment, we're gonna drop the links to Suns Regional Co-ops in the chat. Um, uh, so on each of those Sun pages, you'll see a big orange button. It says, join the co-op. You're gonna click on that and then fill out that form. And we're all gonna do it at the same time right now. Um, just a heads up that you'll see some questions about your roof, about the current electricity usage. If you know the answers, that's great. If you don't, just, just proceed. Um, you know, the sun can still make a good estimate based on your address about whether you can go solar. And there's plenty of opportunity to ask further questions. Um, and finally, um, in addition to the, um, so Noam has put a bunch of uh, co-ops, please find the one that's right for you and double click. Um, uh, Julia, you're asking about care for solar panels after they're installed. I'm just going to step in and, and say that um, solar panels are extremely low maintenance. They have no moving parts. Once they are on, the snow will melt just because they're warmer than the surrounding 
um, area, like they're, they're they, you very rarely need to do anything, <laughs> you know, yeah. Solar panels are, are notoriously low maintenance and hard to break. Um, so finally, I'm just gonna say one more thing before we go into our sign up time, but please hover over the appropriate link if you see it already. Even if you can't put solar panels on your own home or are a renter, anyone who pays an energy bill to BGE, Pepco Maryland, Pepco DC, or Potomac Edison, which is not everyone I know, um, can sign up to uh, Neighborhood Sun Community Solar Project, which is an on paper subscription to Community Solar. Um, and that is an option for some folks as well. Okay, take a moment to double click on the link. We're all gonna sign up for something or set, our, set things in motion in some way. And I'm gonna play um, some vocal music um, to give us a little five minute time of filling this form out. If you're still filling out the form, go for it. If you wanna save the uh, sign up links for completion later, double click on them so they are available to you after we wrap up. Um, I'm happy to, well, we can stay on for a little longer. We were gonna wrap up around 820, but if anyone wants to keep asking questions or chatting, um, feel free. Somebody asked me about subscribing to Community Solar and how that's different from um, choosing a competitive energy supplier through your energy bill. That is indeed very confusing, <laughs> but um, in short, um, you can actually do both. Um, if you're in Maryland or DC, you can both choose a competitive energy supplier, which is like the contract that governs the supply line on your bill. And that contract can include 100% clean energy credits. But then if you subscribe to a community solar project, it like takes a chunk off the top of the whole bill. And it says that chunk of your energy use is going to help finance a new, new community solar project somewhere in your region. And you're sort of promising to use the first three kilowatts every month or whatever, kilowatt hours every month from that solar array. Um, and then the remainder of your bill is governed by your existing supply contract. So um, I am living proof that you can do both. You can do community solar and then have a supply contract for your remainder of your bill. Um, but if you are already under contract with a competitive energy supplier, um, you could still subscribe to community solar. And everything I just said only applies to people who aren't in Virginia, sorry. Ah, so um, Julia is asking about the the fee, the disclosure of the fee. In you know, can you, Roger? Can you explain that? I assume that's that the the um, written into the RFP is the understanding that for gathering and guiding and educating all of the solar co-op members, um, the in, the winning installer will pay a kind of royalty to Sun for each member that goes all the way through the process. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, so we're a 501c3 nonprofit. So about 90% of our funds can I, come. Can everyone hear? Oh, sorry. Can you hear me okay? Um, so, sorry. Um, so we're a 501c3 non nonprofit. So about 90% of our funding comes from grants and foundations. And the other 10% comes from um, installer fees. So when an installer agrees to work with a solar co-op, um, they pay a six hundred dollar fee to um, just well to Solar United Neighbors um, for each signed contract. You know, mo the uh, the majority of people that join the co-op do not end up signing a contract. If they do, that's amazing, and and uh, and we we love that they do. But um, yeah, so that so that's one of the ways that Sun um, does our budget. Um, but you are not paying. Um, it, you know, it's free to join a co-op, um, but that fee is coming uh, from the solar installer. And um, generally it is still so much cheaper for them be, than having to do door to door, which is their main sales technique, that even with that, them paying us that fee, um, in general, you'll still see about a 15% discount compared to the price that you could get from them. So that's not a fee charge to anyone participating. It's just disclosing that, you know, so that, Sun's being transparent about how they're getting paid. Exactly. Thanks. Um, yeah. Well, I can type. Um, Julia just asked. Um, outside of the co-op, are there com companies that we recommend? Um, I'll I'll just include an email address here. 
and we can send you a list of other companies that have worked on past co-ops. So since we're a nonprofit, we don't recommend co-ops, but we can we can tell you companies that we've worked with and you know had good experiences through the co-op process. So I'll just include that email in the chat for our Virginia team. Any other questions? Um, we will, both for the benefit of those who signed up and didn't um, come tonight, as I'm well sorry, as for any one more question. Oh, sorry. Roger. Go ahead. Um, you said you need 30 people to sign up for a co-op. In what proximity do they have to be in? That's a great, that's a great question. Basically, when we define a co-op area, it's based on what distance an installer would reasonably travel and not have an extra fee. So um, it really just depends on where the, where the companies are based. So if, like for this one, we're, you know, for our Maryland co-op, it's Frederick County, Montgomery County, and Prince George's County, just because everyone in that area is going to be within an hour and a half drive. And the installers are all actually most of them are, are based in that area, so so that's fine for them. And then for our Northern Virginia, I think we list out all the places on the website, but um, I mean it's everywhere. It's it's Arlington, it's Alexandria, um, it's um, it's Loudoun County, um, it's Manassas. But, um, basically, it's just you know for a co-op, we it's usually based on the county, but really the thing that matters in terms of thirty people is are they in an area that the installer is willing to, to work in and that it's easy for them to access? So hypothetically, um, if somebody joining us today um, is somewhere where there isn't currently a co-op um, in Northern Virginia, they could find 30 other people to say, hey, I'm interested, and they could potentially start their own co-op. Yeah, and even easier than that, I mean, they could just contact us and tell us that they would be interested in helping start a co-op. And I mean, you don't need to bring 30 people. If you, <laughs> if, if you, bring, a, if you bring a willingness to volunteer and maybe a couple friends with you, um, you know, our staff would love to, would love to work with people. Um, Cause you know, we don't necessarily expect that you'll bring a, a group, but maybe you'll be, you know, be able to act, post on some Facebook groups or some listservs that you're on and two or three other people can do that as well. So we can get a group together. And that 30, that 30 person number is re relatively arbitrary. It's basically just after years of kind of trial and error. It, it's what an installer will see as a useful group because they know that maybe only a third of those people will actually sign a contract. So for them, is it worth it to give, let's say a 15% discount for two people? Probably not, but for 10 signed contracts for them, it probably is. Can I just put again in the chat, um, I mean, there, there are co-ops besides those that were mentioned explicitly tonight. There's one that's for the Eastern Shore in Anne Arundel County in um, Maryland. Right now, um, we sir, we are working with a different organization, um, not Sun, but uh, Civic Works to provide sol residential solar for people in Baltimore and all of the surrounding counties. Um, so um, for the full list of available resources for going solar with neighbors, <laughs> in a model like this one in our region, it's longer than just what we mentioned tonight. And you can check the link I just put in the chat to see the full list. Um, how can you calculate how much money you would save? Um, uh, Roger, do you want to, I don't know if you want to go back to that slide with the ways that. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can, uh, let me, hold on a second, let me, let me share my screen again. But it's worth remembering that most things you would do to change your house, like renovate your kitchen, you know, wouldn't make you any money at all. <laughs> they would only cost money. And this is an extraordinary thing where it costs money up front, but actually will save you on your energy bill every year for like three decades. Um, right. So even 
it's worth thinking about how it's a very different kind of home renovation. So the um, so when you get a solar proposal from an installer, they'll tell you how many years your break-even point will be. But you can see here, let's say for the four kilowatt system, which is a small size system in in Montgomery County, but I mean pricing is pretty similar in in Northern Virginia. Um, right, we're we're talking about let's you know, and obviously prices prices vary. But you can see that the net cost after the tax credit and the Maryland grant there is seven thousand dollars, and then you're estimated to save seven hundred and fifty dollars a year. Um, so just that, you know, based on that rough math, you're looking at between eight and nine years. Um, but then Maryland also has these solar renewable energy credits, which are your payments um, from, the, from the utility. And those are currently worth about, I think about $60 in Maryland. So we're assuming the system is going to produce a little over four of those. So that number is actually an annual number. So, the, so we, when we put together these charts, just because we don't like to overproduce or overpromise, we are. This is very, um, this is very conservative. We the the numbers actually probably will be higher. Realistically, that two fifty plus that seven fifty of your savings per year is a thousand dollars a year. So I would guess that Maryland, um, for example, you would actually probably break even on the system in about in about seven years. Um, is it possible for residents to purchase um, to sell their SREX all at once at the beginning? Yeah. And then most installers also offer an option where rather than, um, or actually the SREC um, brokers as well, uh, offer an option where rather than selling it year by year or quarter by quarter to get this $250 payment, if you want the money up front, uh, most of them offer that you can sell 15 years of your solar renewable energy credits up front for, you know, for a discounted um, price because they're taking, away, you know, they're taking away the uncertainty. But let's say in this example, it's $1,000 per um, per SREC. Um, yeah, so maybe they would they would give you a four or $5,000 um, upfront payment um, in exchange for 15 years of these $250 payments. So I think it was Julie who asked the question, if, if you are, your top priority is, you know, um, taking a bite out of that expense in that first year, you would take the federal tax credit, you take, you know, any state incentive, if there is one, you could sell all of your SREX for 15 years, that's probably a little bit less than they'd be worth over time, but you get that money in your pocket, several thousand dollars to reduce the upfront cost again. Um, and then you could, you know, maybe it seems too long to wait for 10 years of energy savings, but you could at least count the, the amount that you're gonna save on your energy bills in that first year against the cost of the solar panels. So you can see how you can dramatically bring down even the out-of-pocket cost in that first year, even setting aside um, the, the question of how long it will pay for itself. Like even those, those there are a variety of ways in the very first year you could um, dramatically bring down the out-of-pocket cost. Yeah, definitely. Um, also, feel free to just um, send anything my way, and I'm happy to just take five minutes and help you break out the numbers. You know, because sometimes it can be confusing to if you haven't done it before to look at a five-page proposal. So I can just kind of take out the key numbers and show you. Okay, well, based on this, they think your break-even point, you know, either with the upfront payment is going only going to be five years, or you know, would otherwise be eight years if you you know sold the the solar and all that energy gas point at a time. With gratitude to all, I'm gonna pass it off to Sophia to wrap us up and we'll say good night. Awesome, um, thank you everybody for showing up today and asking all the great questions. Um, I learned a lot and that was really cool. Um, so thanks Roger as well and Corey for your participation in this as well and getting information um, out there. Um, and I will also want to thank our co-sponsors, uh, the Imam Center, the Islamic Center of Maryland, the Islamic Community Center of Potomac, and Masjid Muhammad. Um, like Roger said, if you have any questions, shoot him an email. Um, if you want to do any environmental advocacy work in the DMV area, you can shoot me an email. I am going to drop it right now. Um, 
Sophia at um, Also on our website, if you want to check that out, um, you always can. Um, but thank you all so much. Uh, we're going to wrap up right now so everybody has time to get ready for more work. Um, but it was great, uh, great workshop. Thank you all so much. Some of my home.